We used to get an awful lot done up in the United States Congress. We actually work. We had bipartisan deals. We will definitely sign on to this compromise package, so long as you also accept this giant pile of manure that we've got right here for you that we're going to hit you in the face with. Joe Biden came out and announced a deal had been reached on infrastructure. Yay. Okay, so first of all, let me just note, America's infrastructure is not in serious trouble. The notion that America's infrastructure is just awful and bad in every way, and it's just horrifying. It's not true. The vast majority of America's roads and bridges are pretty okay. And the vast majority of the ones that are really not doing well are ones that are in particular states, which means they really should be state costs, not federal costs. Like the notion that we have much worse infrastructure than anywhere else on earth, or that we really need to pour like a trillion dollars, minimum $2 trillion into infrastructure is just not correct. But this has become sort of the go-to. Whenever you are a member of government and you just want to blow money into things, all you do is you just say infrastructure because this is something people on a basic level understand, right? We all sort of understand that the government has a hand in building roads, for example, because the roads connect all sorts of different communities. And so you want the government to shoulder the cost of what is, in effect, a non-excludable, non-rivalrous good, right? We all sort of get that the roads are, at the very least, a public good, right? Something that government does. We, we understand that the government helping to foment the, the placing of broadband even is something that, that benefits a lot of Americans. Although if you just deregulate it, the truth is a lot of these companies can pay for it themselves. But we all sort of get the idea that the government should be involved to a certain extent in the infrastructure project because public goods are typically, again, non-excludable, non-rivalrous goods in which private people sometimes can't agree. Okay, so... Does that mean that the federal government needs to spend hundreds of billions of dollars right now on this stuff in the middle of a giant inflationary spiral in which we have a shortage of materials and a shortage of labor? Of course not. Of course not. But this has become Joe Biden's big bipartisan push because he figures that if he can get Republicans on board for infrastructure, then he can pretend that he is a bipartisan president when in fact he's an extremely partisan president. Now, they already passed fairly recently a bipartisan bill that was supposed to send a bunch of money toward quote unquote research and development directed at fighting against China. And it passed with wide bipartisan support, even though, again, it is a giant pork bill. So there's another giant pork bill. Now, Republicans, if they had any brains, would be like, nope, not interested, right? Because the reality is that you aren't going to spend a lot more money than, than we would like you to spend. And if you're going to do that, you can do that on your own. Like truly, if you just want to blow out the deficit for no appreciable gain, then you can just do that on your own, right? Make you use reconciliation for it. If you want to break the filibuster, then you're going to have to do it through the budget process because you only have two or maybe three of those per year. Waste a bullet on, on this infrastructure package and let you own it. But no, we have to have the quote unquote moderate wing of the Republican Party, including people like Susan Collins and Mitt Romney, who decide that it's important to lend bipartisan cover to Joe Biden. Now, here's the thing. They are being played. They're obviously being played. I'll explain how in just one minute. So according to the New York Times, President Biden struck an infrastructure deal on Thursday with a bipartisan group of senators signing on to their plan to provide about $579 billion in new investments in roads, broadband internet, electric utilities, and other projects in hopes of moving a crucial, crucial piece of his economic agenda through Congress. Biden's endorsement marked a breakthrough in his efforts to forge an infrastructure compromise. But here's the thing. It was far from a guarantee the package would be enacted. Both the president and top Democrats say the plan, which constitutes a fraction of the $4 trillion economic proposal Biden has put forth, can only move together with a much larger package of spending and tax increases. Democrats are planning to try to push through Congress unilaterally over the opposition of Republicans. So here is what Biden is doing. And this is why these Republicans are just dolts. What he is doing is he's bifurcating this package. He's saying, what if we pass this part here with bipartisan support, but I'm only going to sign the bipartisan part if you guys allow me to vote on and sign this giant other package. Okay, well, that's the same thing as just putting it all in the same package. What are you talking about? Okay, so in other words, he's going to get pretty much what he wants and he's going to get the veil of bipartisanship at the same time. So here is Joe Biden announcing we have a deal. We had a uh, really good meeting and answer your direct question, we have a deal. And uh, I think it's really important. We've all agreed that... Uh, None of us got what we all that we wanted. I clearly didn't get all I wanted. They gave more than I think maybe they were inclined to give in the first place. But this reminds me of the days we used to get an awful lot done up in the United States Congress. We actually worked with them. We had bipartisan deals. 
<laughs> we get a bipartisan deal, except they didn't get a bipartisan deal, as we'll explain in just a minute. Now, Biden is using this, he, he, again, to pretend that he is a bipartisan president with wide public support. He is not. He's got 52% public approval rating right now. Okay, now, that is pretty much the exact same percentage of the popular vote that he won last time around. Right? Of the popular vote, he won like 51, 52%. He has not increased that. He has not decreased that. It's a pretty hard base of support, but it's also a hard level of support on the ceiling. So as things start to accrue, you know, as the crime rates continue to remain high, as the economy continues to flounder more than it is soaring, as all of that happens, he's likely to feel some economic pain from this, some, some sort of popular pain from that. But Republicans are providing him cover for no appreciable gain. It makes no sense at all. Here is Biden, however, saying, I'm not going it alone. I'm not doing I, I don't have to go alone anymore. I know there are some of my party who discouraged me from seeking an agreement with our Republican colleagues who said that we should go bigger and go alone. To them, I say this. I've already shown in my young presidency that I'm prepared to do whatever needs to get done to move the country forward. That's what I did with the American Rescue Plan, which is one point nine trillion dollars. Let me say this. When we can't when we can find common ground, though, working across party lines, that is what I will seek to do. Except he's not looking for common ground, as we will see. What he's looking for is the veil of bipartisanship so he can ram through 95 percent of what he wants. So Mitt Romney playing the willing dupe. As per his usual arrangement, here is the senator from Utah announcing how happy he is with this bipartisan compromise. One of the big surprises I had coming to Washington was the sense that uh, while everybody was fighting with each other, you know what, we get along really well. This group gets along very well. My colleagues in the Senate, we work together. And it's been years and years, people have been talking about the infrastructure needs of our country. We know that. We recognize the crumbling in infrastructure. And this group came together and actually got a job done. Oh my God, look what we got a job done. Except you didn't, you didn't. Quote from the New York Times, on Capitol Hill, Democrats signaled their openness to accepting the initial details of the agreement provided that their moderate colleagues accept a second, much larger reconciliation package. So in other words, we will definitely sign on to this compromise package so long as you also accept this giant pile of manure that we've got right here for you that we're going to hit you in the face with. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe? 